Hey everyone, Mark Price here at devslopes.com and in this video we're going to learn how to work with put requests or updates and we're also going to talk about URL parameters and to work with an update okay, we've got the get which fetches, the post which is something new and the put which is update, all we have to do of course is uh, app.put it's that simple function request response repose response okay very good close that off okay so an update is when we take existing data and we change it so the first thing to do is actually find the object that makes sense right <clears throat> excuse me so uh, in essence, we're sending up an object, so there's probably a body, like in a post request, we're sending up the body and the, and the information we want to change. Um, and then uh, if it's there, we change it. If it's not, we can say like, you know, no item or no object found. So we have a list of items here. So what we probably want to do is uh, have a for loop, right, that goes through each of the items. So, you know, we can say for var x equals zero, y x is less than ingredients dot length x plus plus. Okay, but how do we know what the new item is? That's interesting. Well, could we finish this off without doing that? Maybe, let's see here. So we wanna get the ingredients. We don't know which one it is, so yeah, we can't. So we can't do anything until we know how to get the, the information uh, from the request. So let's do that now. Let's start working with URL parameters. And the next thing I also wanna do is, I think that it's not good that we have just the, the default uh, route as as our ingredients. This should probably say ingredients. Okay, same here. Ingredients. Let's we're gonna refactor. Okay, and then down here will also be ingredients. So now we have to go to slash ingredients to get our ingredients. Okay, so what we want to do is work with URL parameters. So what we're gonna do here is right here. Okay, we're gonna say slash and then use a colon and then we're going to put a variable name here we're going to we're going to call this ingredient id this can be called whatever you want okay ingredient id so what's happening here is we're adding a custom id to the actual url itself i know that sounds a little bit crazy and we'll we'll see it in a minute here so what we're going to do is we're going to say var ingredient id equals request dot param params param params dot ingredient id okay so the client's going to send up a custom id and as a url parameter which you'll learn about in a moment and then we're just grabbing it here and sticking that id over here okay and if you're wondering, well, where's this ID coming from and why do we pick it? Well, this is up to us. We're the API developer, so we get to decide what information we want. And I'm, I'm saying as an API developer, I want the ID of the ingredient. So the client needs to send me up this ID right here so I can know which one to change, okay? Yeah, I think that makes, that makes perfect sense. Yep, so ingredient ID. Now, what about the text to change? Well, we can put that in the body of the request so var text equals we're going to say request dot body and let's say dot text okay we're designing this we can change things around as we need okay cool and then we can do some error handling here if there's not an ingredient id okay or if ingredient id equals an empty string in fact what we should also do or if not text or if text is equal to this well actually that's probably okay because we could no should we should we allow our ingredients to be empty probably not no that wouldn't make any sense or if text is equal to an empty string and then what we can do here is some order of operations so um, we can say Put this in parentheses here in this, so we check both sides of the equation, and then this. One or one of these has to work, <clears throat> or excuse me, be missing. One of these have to be missing in order to fall into our error handling statement. And then we can say um, it's just 
it's just wrapping across the screen if you were like why is this looking so ugly there we go let's uh, fix that here okay then we can say um, response dot status and let's say 500 and dot send and we'll say error you missing or we'll just say you must provide um, you must provide actually you know what I think I did this a little bit wrong you must provide ingredient text uh, there definitely will be uh, an ingredient ID um, because we got here meaning we would never have even gotten to this code if it didn't exist and you'll see why in a minute here so I'm going to take that side of the equation out here so we'll just do this cool so if there's not text or if the text is empty then send the status you must provide ingredient text okay now let's put our for loop inside the else statement that means we, we have everything we need and what do we need to do well we need to find the ingredient that we want to change so we'll say var in for ingredient uh, I'll say ing um, in the keyword <laughs> so ingredient is going to be equal to ingredients x so we're just grabbing an element out of there okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if ingredient dot ID is equal to and then we're going to say request dot params dot ingredient ID okay are you with me so far we haven't really done much too different we're, we're just grabbing it from this new variable here and, and you'll see how it works in a minute here if you don't quite understand yet so we're going through each item in this array and we're grabbing the ID out of it of each of those items so ing the ID we store a variable here if it's the same ID as the one that's coming in from the client saying this is the ID that I want to change that means it's time to change it and then what we can do is we can say um, ingredients X dot text is now going to be equal to this new text we have here and so it's not confusing we'll call this new text okay it's not the best word I probably should have called it like ingredient title or something uh, but that's okay oops okay so if we find the right ingredient okay then uh, that looks good here if we find the right ingredient then we set the ingredient and we update it yeah this is good and then what we can do here is we can break out of this loop because we don't need to we don't need to keep going because we found the ingredient and then outside of this for loop is where we could send the response so response dot send and then that's just a standard 200 status remember response response dot send ingredients we'll send the new ingredients list that's now been updated okay so from the top I know go down again so we were doing the put request here it comes in and it has a very special unique syntax the colon and the ID uh, which will actually pass in as a parameter on the URL and you'll see that in just a moment here and then we grab the text from the body we've done that before if the text is empty or null we send back an error otherwise we go through the entire list of ingredients until we find the one that matches the ID and we're grabbing the ID from request dot params remember express knows how to store stuff in here it just finds it and puts it in there request dot params dot ingredient ID Okay, the name is very important. It's the same exact name and case as this right here. Okay, request that params that ingredient ID, and then what we do is we grab that that same ingredient, and we replace the text with the new text. We break out of the for loop, and then we send back the new ingredient list to the user. I know it's a lot, so if you need to pause the video and take a look at it and really read it through, you can. But now you're going to see where this really all comes together here. Okay, so let's go ahead and control kill this here. Uh, you know, before we do anything else, though, um, it's kind of annoying to have to keep killing the server, right, and, uh, and going back and forth. So what I think we want to do is install a tool that automatically recognizes changes and restarts the server. How does that sound? So what we're going to do is we're going to say npm install, okay, dash g for global. And then we're going to say node mon, okay, like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to install this cool package called node mon. Uh, on our computer not inside our folder for the project but inside our actual computer and it's gonna let us use it from anywhere uh, for any of our projects okay so when you you can install packages at a global scale uh, and you would do that with utilities like nodemon and so now 
Okay, instead of running node server.js, we can run node mon server.js. Okay, and now watch this. Let me move this over here. And let's just make a fun change just to show you how it works. Okay, let's just add um, put something in here for fun and save it. The server just changed. Do you see that? The server just restarted. Okay, it's going to do it again and I save. So that's cool. Every time you make a change, the server now restarts and you're back in business and you're developing much faster. So here's a good example of using a utility to help our development process. So what I want to do is go into Postman. Okay. And let's create a new one. So new tab. And uh, we're going to do a post request. No, a put request, excuse me. And this is going to be the URL, HTTP, local ho localhost 3000. That's what we're working on right now. Slash ingredients, because that's what we changed it to. Now here, let's just make sure our get request works first. Just the insanity check, right? Okay, get request works, we're getting four items. Okay, our server's working. Now let's change that back to a put. Okay, so this is interesting. This is where the fun part happens. So we're gonna put a forward slash, and which item do we wanna update? Let's change frog legs. Let's change that to something else. We realize that that's probably not a good ingredient uh, for this breakfast that we're making. Uh, so what we're gonna do is copy that ID right here, and we're gonna paste it in the URL. In the URL. Okay, now. Look closely, okay? We're taking the ID and we're putting it here after the slash, like it's its own unique URL. Well, here in our code, we did the same thing. We're saying, go to ingredients slash this. Whatever we put in there, okay, is gonna be shoved into this variable inside of this name. Oh, so that special colon means it's a URL parameter. This is a URL parameter, something that we're adding to our URL. So, it finds it and then you can um, when you put it in here, it finds it, and then you can use it. Okay, so we're saying, hey, we want to update this ID of the of the frog legs. And we're just putting it here at the end of the parameter. And then what we want to do is in the body, we want to specify what we want to change it to. Now, we could also have made a second URL parameter. I could have said, you know, change it from frog legs to, you know, to chicken. Um, but URL parameters, um, you know, you don't want to have spaces and things like that. It starts becoming a problem. So we're gonna do that in the body. So what I wanna do here is in the body, okay? We're gonna to go to raw, and it's gonna be application.json. And all we're gonna do is say text, and we're gonna change this to what should, we got eggs, bacon, and milk. Um, how about hash browns, okay? So we're gonna change frog legs to hash browns. So we're grabbing the ID, putting it here in the URL parameter, and then in the body, we're setting the text to be hash browns. And let's go ahead and send this and see what happens. Okay, it seemed to have worked. And I go down here to look. And now we no longer have frog's legs. And you're like, what just happened? Why is this hash browns? Well, let's even go look at the browser. If we refresh the browser, oops, and go to ingredients, it is now hash browns. So our update request actually worked. That's really cool. So let's follow the, let's follow the cookie crumbs, okay? So we put in the browser here. Okay, we put in a URL parameter, in the postman, I mean, the URL parameter, which was, in our case, the ID. We just, well, you can put whatever you want there. We called it ingredient ID, and we just passed that ingredient ID right in there, okay? Then, down here, we go through the list of ingredients, and we try and match up the ID until we find it. If we do find it, okay, if we find that ID, then, what's, then what happens is um, we... Uh, we change the text on it, yeah, and then we go in here. Now, what would happen if the ID is not found? Well, what we could do here, we could say uh, var object found equals false, and then if we do find it, we say object found equals or equals true, and then what we could do is here, once it leaves the for loop, we could say if not object found, so if it was false, then response dot send we'll send five hundred or dot status status five hundred dot send and we'll say error and we'll say ingredient ID not found there we go otherwise it was found and then we can send back the new list that's pretty cool so just some more error handling there okay command X or control X. 
and save. Okay, so we've successfully updated. There's one more thing I want to show you. Did we have to use the parameter ID? No. And like I said, mentioned briefly, you can create more than one. You know, whatever. Um, but you typically don't want to work. You want to work with IDs in there in most cases. Um, we could, of course, done this a different way. We didn't have to use URL parameters. We could have put both in the body. I could have taken this out, and then we could have just put the uh, ID in the body as well too, as as the text. Uh, and then grabbed it from there as well, just like we did up, up before, okay? No different. So what have we learned today? Well, if you're starting to see a trend here, the put request and the post request and the get request, we can still write all the same code in there, okay? They can all have, you can send a body up with any of these. So why? What? what's the difference between a put and a post? Well, nothing really. Did you know that you could write a post request in your get request or a put request in your post request or a post request in your put request or a delete request and all of them? You can do all that. Uh, and this is really here to help you structure things, okay? When working with REST uh, and APIs, you have you know your CRUD op operations, create, read, update, and delete, uh, and, it, and you typically want to specify them and put them where they belong. That's all that's happening here. It's, we're categorizing things uh, in their respective areas so the server knows how to handle it. It lets us have slash ingredients, slash ingredients, slash ingredients multiple times because the type of request is different. So for a delete request, you would do app.delete and the same thing. Instead of updating it, you would remove it from the list. Okay, and that'll be a good exercise for you to do on your own. Okay, so lots of cool things going on here. You've learned a lot of few things. In this lesson, we installed Nodemon that lets you um, make changes to your uh, code and the server refreshes automatically. It's speeding up your development process. We've learned about URL parameters, uh, which you can access by using the colon, slash colon, sometimes people forget the slash, but a slash, a colon, and then the name of the variable that you want to set it to. And then you can access that URL parameter by going to the request.params.ingredientID in this case, because it's named, it has to be named exactly the same as this. All right, and then we just updated the object and we did some error handling. And then of course, back in Postman, we passed in the ID here in the browser, no quotes or anything, just the ID itself. It was able to find it and then update accordingly. So you're learning a lot of things and really you've learned You've learned the core operations for Node and Express, okay? There's, as, as far as it goes when it comes to being able to do um, updates and deletions and all that, you've learned all that. You now know how to do all that stuff, uh, and it's all right here. And if you want to do multiple things, let's say you have an app that manages ingredients and it manages, um, let's say, a to-do list, you know, you could say app.get, and then you could have a to-do. You can have as many routes, these are called routes, you can have as many routes as you want. And then each of those routes can handle its own operations, okay? Really cool stuff. So, that's it for now. You've learned a lot. Absorb this. Go through this lesson again if you need to. This is Mark Price at devslopes.com. Moving on and forward. <laughs>